Hey. Yeah. <clears throat> you said there was a but place there's... that that our yeah. center used. Well, there's this guy I've been using uh, over here in Highland Park. Uh huh. And his name is his name is Blue, but I don't know what the name of the oh it's called I think it's called Artworks. Oh. Okay. I think. I know it's on Avenue 64 near York Street. Oh, I'm over yeah, there. Yeah, they. I, I know that I, I can definitely tell you that he does. You might pay a little more, though. But if you're doing as you play, like for somebody or something like that, you know. Yeah, that's what it's for, so I'm going to. Yeah, that's It used I, I to guess. be a place in South Pasadena. I think um, near there probably me. is. But, but I, no, I've always I'm, stuck with blue, though. I haven't been there in in many, many, many years. So oh, okay. Uh, who knows? It's probably not even there anymore. But maybe they moved. It sounds the name sounds similar, so maybe they moved. Yeah, there's a. I, I've been using this guy since I was in since I was at Art Center. Oh. So because he's always done uh, just. Uh, I've tried other places too, and then I, I'm always going. Why do I go anywhere else? I know where the best is. Claire just put it on the chat. Fineartspublishing.com. Yeah, that's their website. Yeah. There's Great. Chad. You put that on the chat. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Fine Arts Publishing. Yeah. That's art artworks. Oh, that's artworks. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Thank you, Claire. Did they change their name? Thank you. Well, no, they, they have artworks on the website, but oh, it, okay. I guess Fine Art Publishing is there. I never look. And I haven't been in there in a while either. But. Looks nice. Yeah. So, everybody, I think everybody in here knows about the materials. And does, does anyone have any questions about materials? Hey, hey, if you look at mine here, I'll spotlight me. Look at this. I, found, I, I was just looking. Oh, oh, by the way, we, we, we might want to just turn off our videos now. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody turn off your videos and everybody, we can keep the mute off for a little while, but um, look at this. See this color? Turn, Turner's yellow. <laughs> I love that. I didn't even know I had it. I was looking at my yellows and I go, hey, Turner's yellow. yellow. And then I got it out. It's very much like cat yellow. <laughs> so whatever. I just thought that would be a fun deal. I will I will say that the other night though we were talking about some special colors. So if you're looking for some special colors besides my normal colors which are my uh, my normal colors which are the, the Prussian blue, the ultramarine blue, cad red, magenta, cad yellow and and um, lemon yellow. Actually, I like the cad lemon yellow better than just regular lemon yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I missed this car. I was away for a minute. How great! You're talking about them. Oh. No, I haven't seen this. Oh, okay. This is Phoebe. Oh, yeah, no, I was gonna see. Let me. I just watched you. Let me. Let me. There we go. Okay. Um. Yeah, you know, I have the special colors here, so. Turquoise blue, opera, and quinacridone gold. Uh, those, you know, we could definitely, I could definitely do a whole painting with these. Uh, you, you, it's a red, yellow, and a blue. There, these are red, yellows, and blues that I, I have a hard time making. I can get kind of close with our palette, but mm, you know, like this one especially, that's really hard to make. So. Those are some special colors. You do not have to get those colors. But, you know, if you guys want me to throw some in once in a while, I'll certainly do that. It's fun just to, I can use them in the shadows or whatever. So I thought I'd really zoom in on that. Let me zoom out here. Actually, maybe I won't zoom out too much. Where are we here? Okay. All right, so do we have all the videos off? Let's make sure we have all the videos off. And why do we do that? The reason I do that is because 
it'll cut down on the bandwidth and we'll have a, a better, you know, uh, less jerkiness in there and um, more, you know, we'll have a better, what is it, what is it possibility of not getting uh, kicked off. So let me find my pictures here. On and all right. And so, you know, by the way, so I forgot the name of the movie, but there's a movie about Turner. It, it came out not too long ago, and I forgot the name of it. It's supposed to be good. I mean, it's supposed to be actually a really good movie. That was a couple of years ago. Did you know the name of it? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. I, Turner. I, yeah, Mr. Turner. That's what it is. Yeah. But was uh, he was an awful guy? It seems like you'll he never feel a, you'll never feel the same about him again. Right. Right. That's right. It's he an was, interesting art actor who plays him. He's uh, he's Mike Lee's one of his. Uh, if you've seen any of Mike Lee's films. Yeah. Name, but anyway, it was quite quite a good film, but it's. Everybody has their idea of who Turner was, including the filmmaker. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's really interesting, but um, mostly I'm, I'm concerned with his paintings. <laughs> I know a lot, of, a lot of people get into Rembrandt's life, or, you know, Van Gogh's life. It's so important to have a tortured past. But, but it was nice the way they showed the location and then the painting yeah. in the there was a lot of that, which I thought I liked. Yeah. Well, I, I want to see that movie, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down here, Mr. Turner. Okay. And so I'm gonna do a value study first. So if you have black, you can use black. I, I don't usually like to use black, but if you don't have black, take a. Prussian blue and the cad red and mix them. And let's see. Oh now well, oh, which painting are we doing? Well we're gonna work from the photograph, but I just wanted you to have the um so I, I instead of doing a master copy on this one, I wanted to do a master inspired painting. So I don't know why I don't know why I included the uh, the drawing in there. I just thought it might be interesting. So no, they were very helpful. I mean, I yeah. I love those. So I love. It. See, the thing about we let's look at the the painting he did the the watercolor painting. Um, it's really atmospheric, and you're not going to find this because I'm sure it's not there. He he obviously made up a lot. And that's just fine, but Turner could do that. He really quite amazing. So, and I don't think that's a Turner drawing. I just thought that's that's a drawing of that castle, or Bernard Castle. And here's a pretty good drawing. I mean, a pretty good photograph of it. Maybe we'll need to arrange things a little bit different though. So I'll show you. And we're going to do that right now. That's that's why we do these little comps. In fact, here, here's, let's do a quick thumbnail sketch. I'm going to put this up here. Here's right up here. Okay. So let's see. Now, right now the thing's really sort of squarish and vertical. Maybe I want to go horizontal. Um, we could go vertical. I don't know, but let's let's just say from from let's just try a horizontal here. Okay, and then let's divide this thing up into thirds, so we don't put the you know the main part of the castle like right here. You know, I'll I'll, uh, I'll zoom in on this.
Oops. What's going on? I zoomed in so much I can't find it. There it is. I may have to come in here to zoom in on it more. That's the problem. Okay, so this is really, you know, pretty small. Okay, so I use this grid just to to say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe I want my, let's say, uh, castle up here, kind of coming down there. Maybe this is over here. Notice how on these older style paintings. You know, they'll, they'll tend to shoot out more. They don't crop in as much as we do in modern times here. So maybe we could have some trees over here. Now, here's the thing. I wouldn't want this tree to stop right where this stops. So I, I either want it lower to give this more importance or higher to kind of well, frame it in again. Let's see how that looks. Got kind of a tree back here. I like that. I like that arrangement. And we've got little trees around there. Maybe a little bit of a bank here. And maybe, maybe we can throw in some, some kind of river down below. And I just do really quick little thumbnails like this for arrangement. I like it. Maybe let's try a vertical. Maybe I'll, I'll shove this way up to the top. It's kind of the same as it is. I should have made that smaller, so let's... Sometimes I just do another one instead of erasing. I'm going to do this smaller. There's some things like that. I like that comp. I like that. We're coming down here. And then we have that river. Maybe, maybe a little bit of water in there. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe some rocks or whatever in there. I'm just looking for a stop around here. So, so it does, see, that looks kind of boring. Just like one big empty space here. Maybe it needs just a little bit of a stop. So I put a few little rocky things in there possibly with the water trickling. I like that. I like that composition. I like that one too. I know it is vertical, but hmm. Okay. So let's go into and do this a little bit higher. I'm going to draw this a little larger, and I think, let's see, maybe I'm going to shoot that out a little bit. Uh, Rob? Yes. Just to be totally clear, uh, we're going by the photo and not by Turner's painting. Yeah, I'm going by uh, the photo. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Sometimes I, yeah, I need you guys asking me those questions. Hey, Rob. Yes. I did not get that photo. This is Susan Gutner. Or where do I get... find that photo? <clears throat> you didn't get the photo? It's called driving? Bernard Castle number one. Okay. You don't have that one? Uh-uh. Okay. Anyone else? Let's see. Okay. So maybe. Can you, can you send it to me too, Rob? Okay, let me see. Uh, Hi, Pam. Hi, Susan. Hey, hey. I 
I've been thinking about you. You too. Me too, you too. Okay. Let's see. Let me find it here. Oh gosh, you know what? I can just go up. There we go. I'm just going to give you all of them. Both okay. Of you. And then we've got uh, Susan and Pamela. This message with that. Okay. Okay. Should be to you in a second. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let me, I'm going to make this smaller. Okay, here we go. So I, I'm thinking... <clears throat> You know, we could go either way with this thing. So, I'm thinking um, I want yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this kind of like Turner would do this smaller probably. These don't have to be Completely, I, you know, that's not even as small as I was thinking. Wow. Okay, sorry. That's just the way we do it. I'm gonna go really small with this. Kind of overwhelm it with nature here. There's trees in the background. This over there. Maybe that a little bit larger. Step, step. And I'm going to have less of a hillside here. A little more, I call this epic kind of composition. So then I can just really kind of you know, dominated with nature. Maybe get some, you know, remember, here's a romantic para painter from the romantic era, so you want, you want drama. I, I, I kind of like that. So I just took this and extended, I, I took this smaller one here and just extended it out a little bit. And if we don't want as much of this, we could we could crop into that. You see how much time and you know you, you got to put some time into the the composition. It's a big deal. Okay, good enough. All right, so let's. I'm thinking I like that. Well, something in there. Okay. I don't hate it. Okay. So I'm doing the CAD, the CAD red and the Prussian blue. That's all I'm using. Let's go for some sort of mid tones first. Not, try not to use too much water. You know, because it just takes too long to dry. It's really hard for me to explain to you how much water to use. Uh, how about... You don't want it dry because then you can't move it around. But at the same time, if you get it too wet, then it just takes too long to dry. So... Wetter than damp, though. <laughs> I kind of like how this tree right here showcases this part of the um, 
I may even bring it up a little higher. Showcases this part of the tr the uh, whatever you call it thing. We'll call it the castle. Something like that. We'll just paint right over that. We have this light. I think I want to make a bigger deal out of the river, so I'm going to take the land back a little bit more, so, somewhere into the lake. We'll give ourselves some little, sort of little, you know, you wouldn't even believe that artists put these in here for reasons. You take that out of there, though, and it looks a little empty, it looks a little boring. All right, so I'm just gonna actually just sort of dry brush. See, very dry. Dry brush this in. Such a quick, easy way to do water. We have a couple of bushes here, some trees in the foreground. I like that. I can pull those right over things. Maybe even right up into there. Gives us a little overlapping, which I like. We even have some trees up here that are overlapping. You might want to ask yourself, where's the, where are the darker areas? Maybe down in here. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> what? What are the darker areas? Yeah, it kind of looked like it's all the same value. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of times, you know, typically, you know, we'll start from either in the light or middle values. But, yeah, we can give it some, just dig into your Prussian blue. You know, a little less water, smack it in there, some darks there. I know we have some pretty dark darks up in here. I'll go maybe that dark with it. And we have another little, you know, this, this is a landmark, so pe people really know it. So, I mean, I don't know. It depends on what, if you're just doing it for yourself, who cares, right? But, you know, if you're... And it, it's almost like a portrait of it after a while. It's funny, the placement of some of the windows. Like a little window right over there. <laughs> something in there, something in there. And we have some areas of... Uh, sky coming through too that's kind of neat so i don't i don't think we really i mean this is too small of a comp to really get into some of those maybe i'll just kind of indicate a couple window seal things we do have a shadow over here on this side of the and it casts a shadow over here onto this get something back there too there a few little ditties in there Some darks in here, but not not as dark as this. So, some darks at the base of the trees. There'll be darks back here too. I just kind of base them in. Some bushy things in there. Just looking for values. Now, the sky. I mean, I think there is some light blue in it, but it's a very light sky. If you wanted to, you could make a very sort of stormy sky. Let's do that, let's try that. That's romantic. I feel like more of a stormy sky. You know, if we, if we got it kind of dark around here, we might even be able to set, set off our building a little bit. Right now the building's darker than the sky. What if we made the sky darker than the building? And this is why I do a value study, just to see. 
Now I might do many value studies. Especially after you've done one, usually the second one and the third one goes a lot faster. All right, so we got some good good darks back in here and behind here. Yeah, typically watercolor, right, you you darken it more up at toward the end. And that's a that's looking very romantic. You notice how I curve the tree into here, and this kind of pulls you back into here. See? That's very classic. It's just, just a basic, it's a tunnel composition, generally speaking. You see Turner uses this all the time. Some deeper things down in there. I don't want to get black with it or anything, but darker. Right over the front. I want some things going, you know, right over the front. I can see we have a couple of branches in there too. Put a branch over here too. That's a very classic thing. I, mean, I wouldn't call him classical. I mean, he certainly is schooled in the classics, so, but he comes into his own later on and does just basically abstract expressionism before there was, my gosh, way before there was ever a word for it. And maybe a couple of little shadows behind our rocks right here, just indicating. Maybe I'll, here we go. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Now we do have a darker building than the the sky. I went lighter with the building and went darker with the sky. I don't I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing that. But it was a it was a try. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the color one. Rob? Yeah. I was looking at Turner's painting. The castle's in a focal point, but it certainly isn't the most important thing about his painting. I mean, in the foreground, there's a man in a yeah. tree. We could put a figure. We we could put uh, like oftentimes you you might see, let's say uh, a a person. You know, maybe, yeah. I uh, no. I was just trying to figure out what he was thinking. It was almost like the castle's an afterthought. Yeah, it, it just depends on which on which one's which one he's doing. But yeah, yeah. It, I it mean, even there's there's a lot more detail in the bank on the left side of the river. Yeah, I mean that might be a good idea to do this. Just a little figure indication like that, really small. We yeah. have a figure right up on top of here sitting on the wall saying hello. No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sure. I right. see. See what I'm doing here is if you notice, I pointed this back up like an arrow to the focal point, right? And you notice this too. Not exactly, but sort of like like a hand going, "Look over there! Look over there! Look over here!" You know, that's very classic. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to the. Uh, well, I can just do. It. I can do them both together, right there. And I will. Okay. So let me make this a little bit. Can you see this guy? Okay. Let's do a quick drawing. Aren't ruins great? They're so broken up, they're so fun to paint. And I guess I'm doing this bigger, isn't aren't I? Just gonna have to work out my composition. That's not bad. Sometimes the final composition just doesn't. 
um, you know, maybe you just you got lost, and or maybe you just got more interested in another area. Okay. Yeah, I saw the one where the guy's standing in the river. Possibility. Okay. So let's come in with some, I'm gonna use, um, ultramarine blue in the sky. There are some very light things happening. That's, I mean, in the, in the picture, it's quite green. Hmm, I'm gonna go with the ultramarine blue. Very light. We do have some clouds. I'm going to pull in a little bit of, I pulled in a little bit of sky from the top. I'm going to try this one without the dark in the background and we'll see. Which means I'm going to make this sky a little bit, just the sky coming through a little bit darker. Making this feel a little bit lighter. Or let's see, no. Okay, I think that could. That's a pretty good value. And then I'm gonna use the Prussian blue. I'll tell you what, remember we used the Prussian blue and the red for this? If you just take that color and add some yellow, like CAD yellow to it, it's a great green. It's a very natural looking green. And you can, you know, cho choose how much blue and red and yellow to add to it. So that'll vary your green. Let's see what we got there. That's kind of a bluish green. We got these yellowy greens back there. I kind of like. All right. And I'm going to use them just to, I'm using them to kind of pop this area. I don't like that these are the same height. I wish they weren't. I know this one is a little taller over here. So maybe I'll pay attention to that a little bit more in the, in the finish. And then lighter over here. <clears throat> maybe try some different some different greens. I mean, I'm using the same color. I'm just using, I'm tagging a little bit more yellow back here. Maybe I'll just get little bits of yellow in there. It's not that far away, so. And this is all in shadow. And this hillside here is just, I pulled my, I made my hillside not so big. Again. Hmm. On this one, I'm going to make the castle kind of like a grayish brown. So if you take, again, the, the Prussian blue and red and Prussian blue, cad red, cad yellow, mix them all together and add more orange to it. So that's the red and the yellow, right? Add more of that to it. Let's see what we're coming down to. Let's see what color we're getting in there. Something like that. Kind of grays in there too, but 
I want that to be pretty light. If anything, it's a little dark. So the, the water's most likely reflecting the sky. I do see some little green reflections in the water. Those would be fun. I'm going to start off with just the sky color, which isn't a whole lot. I just used a little ultramarine in there. And I'm going to dry brush that in right over my guy here. Sorry about that. Had to be done. Just trying to move the eye over and around here. Maybe I'll have a couple of these. See? Give and take. Give and take. See? Point you back around into here. There's no mistake. Just look at their drawings. You'll see it. You'll, you'll, see, their, you'll, you'll see their hand moving in this direction. Keeping the viewer's eye in, in, in. And that's a little bit literal. But you know, you throw it in like that and then you come back over with a like a little tree or something over into it and I just use my fingernail for that. Now by the way, I'm looking up at the camera though, that's a lot darker than what I just put down. Wow. I know it's gonna dry lighter. So the camera isn't hundred percent accurate, just so you know. Mine looks much better than that. I'm just joking. <laughs> Kind of darker over here now. See, now that I put this dark over here, now that one doesn't look so dark. I don't know why it does that. And I'm not anywhere near. I'm only about a seven or an eight value right here. Whereas it might look like a 10 on your screen. You got your guy there. Okay. I think Turner would probably spice up a few of these areas with some beautiful little yellowy greens in there. Turner's quite the colorist, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of yellow into my clouds. Very faint. And maybe a little bit of pink too. I'm going to use magenta. Very, very little. Maybe bring some of that down into the water too. It's reflecting the sky. Why not? I mean, if you look at Turner's, they're not like, they're not like what, what he was looking at. So the other, the other pictures I included were just there for confusion. No, I'm just joking. Uh, they're just there to uh, just re reference. That's all. <laughs> I just want to confuse you. All right, we're about ready. Maybe 
a little shadow in there. I'm just using ultramarine blue. I'm just glazing it right over all that and cast a shadow down there like that. Maybe get a couple of those, these little things in there. <clears throat> Kind of a cool little painting all on its own. Sometimes the little the little thumbnails can be great. I'll send it up to my mom on, on a card saying hello. Thought you might like Turner. Turner esque. She really likes my, my watercolors the best. She's always said that too. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not sold on that. I I like my other paintings, but as well. But she doesn't seem to want my other paintings as much. If I give her a watercolor, it's like oh. If I give her an oil, it's like oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. Jolly good. Now we got a plan. Okay, so let me. Rob, could we see those for just a second together? What? Oh, the the these. The to the uh, thumb yeah the sh yeah thank you oh, all of them here let me let me no uh, no those two that's great you don't want my thumbnails what's wrong with my thumbnails <laughs> you can put your thumbnail into here, it. there's my thumbnail right it's okay. it's <laughs> kind of a neat little page oh I like it <clears throat> it is it's wonderful yeah thank you thank you very much it's always good to compliment the teacher. <laughs> she will get an A, right? Yeah, an A, an A for the yes. Because I give you guys grades, you know. I just want to get this in. Oh, wow, that's too much. That looks good. Some other topics. <clears throat> I like it. Let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to take this out here. Let's start drawing. So what, basically what, what we did here is we just made ourselves a road map. I'll do that like this, something like that. I'm gonna make this up a little higher. I'll, if the if the Bernard Barnard Castle purists out there come after me, I'll tell them you made me do it. It's a little bit of a dome here. I'm gonna just go ahead and dome that out. See what I did? I just made that. I rounded that off just a touch, just a little bit. I mean, this just a little bit higher. I don't like things of almost identical height. It just usually doesn't work as as good. That's a little far over, isn't it? Let me see, where are we? I think we're okay. Kind of crumbly up here. We've got that little. We got a wall crumbling, and then something in the background. Kind of, I like that. This one flattens out, goes up, over, and then squares off. Yeah. Nice to know those little things. You know, while we're doing some architecture here. Let's just let's just come up. 
about about there. There's where our little little window is. We can just acknowledge a few things. Little lights going over there. And we've got a an area here where there's a shadow and it kind of goes around the building, see? And even if it doesn't, I'm gonna stretch that around that building anyway. Cause that's what I do. We make it ours. I, I looked at all these pictures and I, I, I seen these paintings of this too and I'm going, they, these classical painters really took, I mean, especially romantic painters, they really did take some liberties. And so, please, please do. So there's one. And we've got these beautiful uh, arched windows there. Those are neat. A little cast shadow right next to it. I keep my drawing kind of loose. I think I could make a bigger deal out of these windows. I don't like using my my pink eraser. Well, this one's even bigger over here, I think. Looks a little larger. Am I wrong on that? A little bit. And got little things on them. Some architect in the room. I'm sure we have an architect in the room. Probably knows what all these little buttresses or what are these? Not buttresses, but little thingies are for architectures. Toby. What was that? Toby is an architect. Aha! Aha! She's like, oh, you caught me. She's like, now I'm gonna have to remember what those darn things are. I forgot. Wait, what is the question? Oh, I, I, they have these little holes in there. Were they like logs or something? Or were they like to hold, uh, what do you call those things? Like, not banisters, but. Braces. Bra Bra braces. Yeah, if that's, but that's the outside of the building. I don't know what those would be. Okay. I think they're called flying buttresses. Well, no, above the. I, no. I agree. That was the first or word that came them. to my mind. It's not a flying buttress if it's oh. connected to the building, though. Like a flying buttress would be out here, right? Right? Well, yeah. But, Rob, so. aren't you wondering what the little holes are, not what the buttresses are? Yeah, the little holes, aren't they to hold, like, stabilizing braces or something Maybe, like that? yeah, that go through. No, it's to face the enemy. Yeah. Aha! Right. <laughs> you Where put, they pour the oil or whatever. <laughs> you put your sword or your, not your sword, but whatever weapons they had, and you stick it out the little window so they won't come and take over your castle. Uh... Hey, now, see all these little things? I think, you know, for, for some of the shadows on these, you might as well just do it with your pencil. See, like that? I just do it with my pencil because that's really common in watercolor, by the way. You'll, you'll see artists do that all, not only now, but they did then. Um, so just, just a few little lights and shadows and details on them. It helps, it helps in the end. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Just play on the outsides of my line there. Nice. Little trees. Got some lawn, little grasses. I want my I don't want I don't want this much hillside, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and and maybe maybe I will put a little guy a fisherman. Do you think that should be good or I don't know. I was just gonna have rocks there. So you do whatever you want to do with yours. I'll put a little yeah, figure. Fisherman. A little fisherman. Yeah. I'm just gonna have the this person um, like 
sitting down. Something like that. You see all my lo all my um, line rocks are in a line like that. That doesn't usually work too well. So I'll put another rock over here just to break that up. Maybe something in front of. Try not to make them all the same size. Some are smaller than others. Maybe a couple all by themselves. Just kind of trickling along there. So we just have our water just kind of. Yeah. We have this tree over here. There's something in the back over there. There's a tree right there. A little bit of a little bit of overlapping. I'm going to put a little land going like that, just a little bit of land kind of creeping back in here a little bit. Just outcroppings of rocky things. Okay. Can you push it up so we can see that bottom part better? I, we can't see the rocks really below the fishermen. Oh, okay. Thank you. You want to zoom in on it or anything? Um, no, that's good. Thanks. <laughs> Do you want... <laughs> would, would you like a pencil? I've got this <laughs> unison pencil right here by Granite Force. <laughs> I'm just joking. I got, I got like uh, 20 of them for a dollar at the dollar store, and they're actually pretty decent. <laughs> I'm laughing. That's me laughing. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know. I, I know my uh, palette and things are covering it up, right? So I could zoom out a touch. I don't know. It's a it's a trade off because I don't know whether to zoom out or zoom in sometimes. Because then you don't see the whole thing, and then if I zoom in too much, my palette might get in the way. Now, do you have to do the sky first? Of course not, but I tend to like to do that. And I tend to, I, I sort of liked the sky we did in the color comp. So I'm just using the ultramarine blue here. I'm kind of, uh, I'm gonna dry brush. I'm drying off my brush here a little bit. Um, giving myself some little cloud edges here. When you watch it, I'm going to dry brush these in here now. I'm going to use the circular motion like this. See? So I don't get too many jagged edges on my clouds. Just like that. Could even. Creep a couple in there. And if you want them really sharp like that, you could keep them or um, I'll show you a trick. Let's let that dry up of just a touch. Mine's not really wet. Not I mean it's wet, but it's not like extremely wet. I'm gonna I'm just gonna paint this this lighter blue we used down here which is still ultramarine and but just much yeah much lighter and bring that right behind see I take it right behind the building and just I don't just come up to something and stop that's almost always a uh, not a great thing to do so it just continued all back here maybe even back here Maybe I'm going to take a little bit behind here too. 
Paint, paint some behind your trees here, and we'll leave a little couple sky holes. So if you just go like this, paint a whole bunch behind your trees. See, that won't influence the color of your trees very much, but it'll give you lots of opportunities to put a couple of sky holes. Gotta love the sky holes. Okay. And here's what I was talking about earlier. If we wanted to lose these, I'm just losing, I'm using a very damp, just a damp brush. And I can just soften this edge a little bit. Maybe I need a little more water than that. Okay. And I can just soften the edge. It doesn't look bad though. Just using a little bit of water. I'm using more. I think I let it dry a little too much. Oh, there we, there we go. It's softening up. What happens is some of this sky just kind of creeps in over there. There we go. It's a nice edge. You do the same with this. I'm just using water. Just soften that edge a little bit. Okay. Very nice. You know, how about this? While we're thinking of it, let's put just touches. And I mean, look, I mean, I'm going to take a little bit of lemon yellow. Just, you don't need very much lemon yellow in these clouds. And I mean, very little. That's enough to do the whole thing. And I'm just going to touch, just get that color vibrating around a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. Pull it right behind the trees. And maybe some of that pink too. He used color straight out of the tube when he... Very common. So I'm taking just a little bit of cat red in there too. Very little, see? That's all. I'm getting a little watermark here. I don't mind that. I don't mind if it goes into there. That's okay with me. It's lovely. All right. I'm going to make that green up. The Prussian blue and the cad yellow and some cad red. Let's see what I came up with. Oh, I like that. Okay. Sometimes I know that the, the light's right on it, so my that's a little bit kind of a brown or green. Yeah. As I put these in, see? I'm using a drier brush. See, I'm just tagging the tops. This is how you get those great, great edges. Watch, just, just. Sometimes what I'll do is pull apart the edges a little bit more. Isn't that great? And then this way you get all these little, great little sky holes. I would call that kind of a damp dry brush. In other words, a dry brush on the wetter side. And I liked how in my little comp, how I had some, some of my, my branches and things coming over this way. Using these using this foliage to kind of showcase this. See, I've got it, uh, something dark behind it, and that kind of pops it.
Just tagging those little edges. Isn't that great? You can later on we'll throw a couple little branches through here and things. It's not necessarily finished. And sometimes I don't do that in the beginning, but you know, in this case I think it warranted hitting a little more detail in the beginning. <clears throat> okay, some dark. Now, just, just so you know, watch, I'm going to take ultramarine blue and lemon yellow and a little red, cad red. And you can get nice greens that way. That's a cooler red, a, a cooler, any more yellow in it. So just to show you, you can get nice greens with using the other blues and Uh, yellows and reds too. So very, so you'll hear me say a lot of times it's red, yellow, and blue, and I don't really care which one. Um, that's what I mean. I mean, I mean, I made this with the other red, yellow, and blue. This is with the cad red, cad yellow, and Prussian. This is with the ultramarine. Well, I think I used cad red in here instead of uh, magenta, but I, I could have used magenta. Or I'll throw in some magenta. Beautiful. I mean, isn't dry brushing great? Look at that. It just does it all for you. Look at that. It just wants to. <laughs> it's like a dog sitting there looking at you saying, what would you like me to do next, sir? I'd really like to pull your sled or something. I mean, Look at that. I didn't do that. Having the attitude of just letting the brush and the paint do the work for you, and you're just guiding. So really, in a sense, I'm actually training, training you to be an art director, <laughs> which is what I was commercially. They, they automatically made me an art director. Okay. All right, let's come back here. That's that's pretty brown, but I don't mind some browns in my green, so I'm gonna leave that there. But I'm definitely gonna add more Prussian blue and the lemon to get some of that. Yeah, some of that really crazy green in there. On the grasses and I'm going to make, because this is in the light and this is in the shadow, I, even though I probably might come over this with a little bit darker stuff, I'm going to just take this nice and light and yellow right behind these like this. Come on, a little more water, Rob. A little more water. There we go. So that really, so I'll come back and reinforce this, but... Just so one feels like it's in shadow, one feels like it's in light. It's glorious. I guess there's stories of Turner uh, would strap himself to the front of a ship in a storm, just so he could get the experience of seeing what it was like to be in a storm. That's in the movie. You'll That's in the movie. It. Yeah, it's cool. I gotta watch the movie. Uh, I came in late. What movie are we talking about? Um, we're talking about um, Animal House. 
No, I'm just joking. It's called Mr. Turner. It's in the chat. It's just called Mr. Turner. It's a book about. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a movie about Turner. How about that? I couldn't think of a good name for a movie, so I just said Animal House. Wah wah wah. The guy is Timothy Spall, and he plays Turner. Oh. And uh, it was made in 2014. Hmm. Just looked it up. Can take these right out. And I'm sure some people will go, you know, those trees couldn't possibly be that big. I'm like, well, but it fits my composition. And I can tell you, artists like Turner would do everything. They would not be a slave to what they're looking at. That, and they'd look at it just the opposite, you know. I'm using this to do, to, to create this sort of vision I'm having, you know. Instead of slavishly copying, it, it's not it's a totally, completely different mindset. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's fine. Just hitting some darks at the base. Usually at the base of trees, if you look, base of trees is where you get the shadows. take my darker trees up here in the foreground. I'm going to put more more blue in the tree. So I can get them darker. There we go. There. And I can I'm going to tap a couple of little darks see what that does just right over that that light back there really makes this come forward and um, give us a little overlapping which creates depth. I'm going to throw a little red in this tree. That's a lot of red. Why? Because reds usually come forward. And it gives me a little variation. Now with all this dark hair, gosh, sure is a great opportunity to hit something light in there. Let's see if I can, my fingernail. Couldn't get it light enough. Probably could if I really get, I just, a lot of times in my dark areas, I like something light. And I'm not the only one. So I don't want anything this dark to be back here, even though the, the camera, the camera might read these darks as being as dark as these. Just for the sake of painting, let's see if I can get this. Paint it right. You paint up to your person and then try to start behind it, you're going to get these stop and start marks. Here's what you do. You go right over it. I wish this wasn't so dark. I'm gonna come back and pat that out with my brush, I mean with my rag, and then hit a couple. 
and we have a million billion rocks in there, and they're very light. I think we'll have to hit a little bit more dark in the river. But, but I don't want to. I don't want to dry brush anything dark over there now because it'll just fade into it. I'll give that a minute or two to set up, and then I'll dry brush over them. Right now, I'll do the, the the rocks, which are kind of orangey and lighter. So I'm thinking red, uh, yeah, red and yellow. Red and yellow. I mean, you have to add a little touch of blue to that red and yellow because otherwise it'll be just be pure orange. Unless you want really orange rocks. Not unlike the color of the building, which begs the question, did they get those rocks from the river? Probably, huh? I don't know. Makes sense to me. But I'm just an artist. Maybe a little bit over here too. Maybe a little bit on these rocks. Oh, whoops. And now that that's pretty dry, I'm going to try. I'm going to try a little bit of a. You know, I see a lot of these green reflections in there, so I'm going to try a little bit of Prussian blue and some CAD. Maybe just a touch of red. Crush Prussian blue. Cad yellow, cad red. Let's see what that looks like. See? That's it. This is what I wanted. It's this being reflected into the water. That's dry brushing. Seeing a few here and there too, kind of scrubbing their way through. There we go. See, I would rather have too much white right here than not enough, because I can always come back and dry brush over with my whites. I like that shimmer that you get. Such a great way to get shimmer, shimmerage. I think I just made a new word. Oh my goodness, another one for the raw vocabulary. I gotta document these, right? If I ever make a book, gotta have the raw. <laughs> Rhythmatic. Remember I've rhythmatic? been writing them. I've been writing them down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Remember rhythmatic? <laughs> like, make it rhythmic. No, it's rhythmatic. That's what it is. I'm telling you. Okay. I'll let that set up a little bit. Get something on the building here. Building is. I mean, here's what you do. You just take cad red and cad yellow and make yourself a good orange. because it's basically orange. And that's what you have to think in terms of what is it basically first? It's basically orange. Then, you know there's a lot of gray in that orange. So, add the complementary color, which is blue. And that'll gray it. Somewhere in there. 
I don't want it to be too strong, so I'm going to keep adding blue to it. See, is that too green? Yeah. Uh, avoid the windows. There we go. That's enough to do the whole thing. Because we want, I want, I want a little bit of light, a uh, little bit of, whoops, a little bit of sky coming through. Ah, oh, bummer. A little bit of sky coming through my windows. There we go. Mine's pretty brown, so I'm going to add a little more blue to it. I thought it was getting too green. Still a little bit on the brown side. Sneak a couple of the little, little blues in there. A little Prussian. Prussian might be a little strong. My advice is use the ultra ultramarine. I want to use little touches of that. Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's too dark, so I'm going to lighten that up. You're better to start lighter and then glaze it again. I'm I'm actually a little on the. Well, I think it'll dry about right. Look how the watercolor just naturally gives you all of that little residues and things. There are some little little grays coming down from the top. If, if I mean, I don't think that's necessary, but if you wanted to, I would just do it wet into wet like that. Kind of fun. He's a little bit darker again. A little light on me. And let's see. Pretty dry back here. If you like, you can take Mr. Razor Blade. Pull out a tree. Because it's still moist. Throw in a couple. I'll cover up a lot of it, but why not? Some of these can be fun. All you need is little hints. You don't need to really, really bright. And they look they look really great next to dark trunks. So you have in and that in and out of, of dark on light, light on dark. We had, where, where did we put that little thing here? Oh, I had a little kind of a, um, a little branch right there and there. 
maybe we'll put something in front of that. Shrubs and weeds and whatever. So you got the light on dark, you got the light on the dark, and then the dark on the light. Those dualities make our eyes want more. I don't know why. It's just a thing that I've learned. All designers know it. It's a trick. All designers talk about it. It bedazzles the eye, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, since our, our light is coming from the left, I mean, the right going left, let's put some little cast shadows. See? Caused by the... Uh, I'm doing... This is just straight ultramarine. But because you have so much color underneath it, it won't look like ultramarine when you're done. I'm going to put a little bit in here. I don't want to ruin my little light to dark effect there. Hold on that. Look at that. That's fun. That's fantastic. Well, since I have a little bit more, I'm thinking, just thinking things, casting shadows. And this is all dry now. Well, golly, I think I'm going to use that same color. And now, even though I'm using um, ultramarine, you're seeing through the ultramarine into the orange, so it definitely won't look like ultramarine. It'll look gray. Like that. Oops, a little darker. More like that. And I cast a shadow. For some re reason, you get some light in the back here. Don't know why. And I think this wall right here could... I'm just going to... I don't like it going into shadow. I want to keep some of that light. So I'm going to pretend there maybe there's some architecture or something casting a little shadow right in there. Like that. I got this one here. I'm going to go ahead and soften this edge right here. Because this is a cylinder, so... As it comes into the light, you don't have a really soft... I mean, you don't have a really hard edge, you have a really soft edge right here, so. Just a touch of water. But this one right here is a hard edge, see? And that's because it's a cast shadow edge. Cast shadows are just, relatively speaking, harder. We got a little cast shadow from this thing. I'm just gonna use a little damp brush here and clean that up on the bottom. There we go. And here, and here, and anywhere else you might see a little shadow. Um, if you have a window seal, hit a little, t hit a little in the top, and a little on the side over here, like that, on all of them. These dark ones, you don't really, you can just put in some dark stuff in there. Some people do the dark just with their pencil. shadow back here. They're pretty dark. I'm not sure I want them that dark. I'm going to hit them with my rag. Just stamp them. I can always make them darker if I don't like it. This is turning out pretty light. My shadows are less contrasty than I thought they would be, and that's just fine because if they're more contrasty, that's hard to take out. But the less contrasty, tra tra you just add a little bit. Now, the biggest problem we're going to have is how do we get every single one of those little rocks in there? There's a lot of rocks in this, in this 
Okay, you know I'm joking, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Is he serious? <clears throat> Let that dry up a little bit. Hit, I'm gonna hit a little shadow over my guy down here on the bottom. A little, just having a nice little day. And I wish I was there. That would be fun. I'm not even a fisherman. I, I would might. I should have just put a painter over here, huh? Why didn't I think of that? Now, because I put all this contrast, you're going to go right there. And, and the other thing is, is we know people know people. We look for figures. It's 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 in our DNA. And now I could put less contrast on it, and that that'd be really easy to do. So. I'd rather keep it high contrast and see if I like it, and if I don't. But I did notice in the um, in the Turner, there's a pretty high contrast little person there, but I know he does that over and over and over. Yeah, you really go to that person. So you know, we'll we'll do other master copies. But I also like this idea of working in the in the um, inspired by a master, not necessarily copying, and that's just as crucial. I mean, that that's 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 a fantastic thing to do. I, I remember uh, I haven't done this in a while, but painting and um, actually just putting books out. Right next to me of just people who inspire me. And maybe get little flicks of their style and what I'm doing. Just just to, just to allow myself to be influenced. Instead of always having to be this there's so many artists like I can't I can't let anybody influence my style. <clears throat> because I'm so original. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to hit a little bit of shadow on the left side of these trees. Not too dark. You, you could add little flicks of other colors in there too. But just think of this whole thing as like a ball. So like this right here is a little ball. I'm going to hit a little bit of shadow on the left side. Left side. Left side. leaving it lighter on the right, leaving it lighter over here on the right side. So you occasionally get this kind of... not a highlight, but a higher light up in there. Think of the areas that wouldn't receive much light too. That, that's, where you, that's where you want to hit a little bit of a dark. Not this dark. You notice how none of these values back here compete with these? So this feels like it's closer to you. So this is what I love about, I'll, I'll just lay something out like this. See all this variation in there? You got warm, you got, you got red, yellow, blue, variation of green. Okay, now what I can do is I can treat this, like there's a ball right there, there's a ball right there. I treat all these like little balls and I just... Little... 
And I'll treat this and I'll just kind of come over on the other side and hit a little bit of shadow and leave it lighter. You know, if the light's coming from this direction, then you might get a little bit of shadow on the bottom too. But in general, it's, it's, it's that kind of deal. And I'll do the same over here. So again, I'm not really looking at what I'm at those those trees. And if you look at Turner all the time, he's putting in what I call formula trees. Uh, he'll base them on maybe on what he's looking at. You know, the, the trees I'm looking at up there, they just don't have much volume. I'm looking for romance, you know? I'm looking for romance. So I want this thing to be turbulent. So I gotta make my own trees. Sometimes you'll see a landscape that just, wow, just the landscape is just already romantic. Here, just see, like that. And then I just break that up. So you're getting something light on the top, light on the side, shadow on the bottom, shadow on the side. Dry brushing works. Really don't need much more than that. But I put something over my little scratch marks that way it kind of nestles them in. So you know we're at the end of the painting because all we're thinking about is little details and but you know if you want to if you feel so inclined you certainly could throw in you know a little bit of those uh, oh that's a that's a big one I didn't mean to put that one in there but it actually doesn't look too bad I could have taken it out though if you want to some of those scruffy trees one thing I like about them is we get a little overlapping of the building Looks like there's some part of the building down here I got left out. Oh well. And then kind of a I guess there's green on those trees, huh? All right. Lemon yellow. Do your duty here. Just dry brushing that all. They're very sort of scrubby. So I'll paint them kind of, I'll just scrub my color in. And that's it. I don't want them. I don't want to put too much detail into them. And I can do the same thing with these, just, just nestle them in a little bit. I don't want to kill the whole thing, but I want to, whoops, sorry. Maybe, maybe we could even, I'm putting on that yellow kind of thick. I'm laying it on thick. more you want to put in the building. I think my shadows could be a little stronger. I think this time I'm going to add a little magenta into my ultramarine. 
Just let's let's just hit that strong. And now my building looks really light. I soften this edge with just water. They have all these little things dripping on them too. It kind of ages it so. <laughs> One time I was working on a set and we had, <clears throat> this is funny, Tiger Woods. It was a, what was it? It was a commercial for Buick and Tiger, Tiger Woods was in it. And and don't ask me why they wanted a castle in it. So we had we had to make this castle. I mean, we had to really make it look like the wall, the rock of the walls and stuff looked just like like the royal walls of a castle. And um, it's so bizarre. So you take styrofoam and and you put the colors you want in it, like red, yellow, and blue. Let's say you put in that, and you put. Um, Okay, so you, you put styrofoam on the wall, like in the shape of rocks, kind of all in a bunch of squares, and then you, you put turpentine and, no, no, I'm sorry, it was uh, acetone. You put acetone plus the colors you want, and you just squirt it on there, and magic, it looks just like rocks. Couldn't believe it. Well, these scenic painters know how to do all that. You know, after I mean, you, you you think it's amazing, and then you try doing, it and you're like, oh, anybody could do this. <laughs> but you just shoot it on there with a, you know, those gardening little squirters for you know, your gardener. You shoot it on there with that. I got castle stories. Oh yeah. I didn't get to meet Tiger Woods, so poor guy. I guess he got in an accident. I hope he's okay. Yeah, I heard he's okay. Did you? Get to, you said you did get to meet him. No, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. No, I. I did Santana, Carlos Santana sets. That's cool. And I got to meet him. He gave me a big hug. <laughs> That's cool. That was cool. He was very nice. I was. That's nice. Got to meet some. I didn't meet Britney Spears, but I, I did her sets, and I saw her, and I couldn't believe I couldn't believe how short she was. I did not think she was that small. It looks so much bigger on TV, I guess, huh? They're always smaller, smaller yeah. than you're headed. Yeah, that's how I felt when I weird? saw Sylvester Stallone. He's much smaller than I had. And oh just my gosh, you're kidding me. I and thought he his, was at least six feet tall, right? And his feature is in his face. I, you know, I, I mean, Rambo had already come out, but yeah. in real life, his features are actually his bone structure is actually quite delicate. Oh. And he's much more handsome in real life. Adrian, Adrian. I was really surprised, and also he's so friendly. He was incredibly oh, friendly. So I just was expecting this Rambo dude. <laughs> mm. You're my way. Um, I walked right next to Arnold Schwarzenegger once. Yeah. And now he had a bodyguard that was about six foot eight. I mean, this guy was gigantic, and you know, of course, he's Arnold Schwarzenegger, so you, got, you know the guy's going to be a bodybuilder, and and um, I walked right past him. I mean, so I'm looking eye to eye, and I thought, I thought Arnold Schwarzenegger was about six four or six two at least, but I could have sworn that I was taller than him. Maybe, maybe I was just feeling. Uh, He's not better than me. <laughs> okay, guys. 11, now, would 14. You, would you believe this, that 
here we are, and I'm getting an email from Amazon saying, here are recommendations of books for you. And the book they recommend is How Robert. Turner Painted. You're kidding me. I mean, this is insane. They know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a little spooky, isn't it? I'm I'm getting I'm getting a little bit irritated with all this invasion of my privacy everywhere I go. Geez. I mean I know you got the people out there who go, Well, you're not doing anything wrong, are you? I'm like, Well, no, but what's it of any of your business? You know? <laughs> Okay, don't get me started. Okay, uh, we've got a little, little indications here, possibly little rocky things. Just, just stuff, you know, little, little, sort of rocky shadows, possibly. Um, you know, because this guy's sitting all the way out here, I'm gonna think. I'm thinking, maybe there's a few more rocky things over here. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of that orange. Possibly, maybe he walked out on there from this beachy kind of area. Sometimes those little rivers can get so shallow. And see, now we can come and just sneak in some other colors into our water. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try some actually. Uh, just straight Prussian blue. I hope this doesn't... I hope this is okay. It's not there. But I want some strong color in there. That's kind of nice. I don't want to kill all my little... My little highlights, my little shimmer, shimmerage. Is that too blue? Eh. I don't hate it. You know, you can throw all kinds of color into your water. You know, most most of the time, water's blue because it's reflecting the sky. But we have all these trees. I mean, think about it. All these trees, all of this might be reflecting that. So it's, we could take a little bit of using that kind of logic. Um, I could take a little of this stuff and maybe reflect it into my water there, like this, and then take it down into here. A little darker on the edge. Just getting a little bit of reflection. And, and so, yeah, this is reflecting in there. This is, maybe that would be a little greener. I don't wanna, I don't wanna kill my little shimmer behind the guy's head though. I guess I like that. Sort of acting like little reflections. See, in paintings, it's really not the detail that does it. It's it's the overall things, the mood. I think even I think we need to. I'm going to glaze a little more color. See, I, I felt like in the beginning I was maybe hitting it a little too strong, and now I can see that it wasn't strong enough in my color. That's just fine um, because it's watercolor and we can keep adding, but it's also a good thing to note that sometimes your first gut reaction is the right one. So I'm going to hit a little bit stronger. It's okay to go right into shadows too.
Maybe some areas just miss. It gets some little lighter areas. And look, so if we have a dome, it does actually get lighter on the right side. And maybe this does too. I can't tell where this is. This, I guess this is a flat wall here, but this might get lighter on the right side. So take Mr. Uh, Rag here and dampen that out a little lighter on that side. It's not much, but it, it all adds up. And just take a few little that's a little dark and you know we're at the end when we're just adjusting things we're just sort of so it's it's edges highlights details small stuff if you're if you find yourself doing that and you've and you've held out as long as you can and then you now you're giving yourself permission to do those details you're most likely at the end of the painting of course some people just go for them right away Here's a little trick. Smack a little dark right behind here, like that. Now, it looks a little ri ridiculous until I feather it out, but because I really want that corner to uh, pop up against the trees. That's the whole reason for putting the trees in there. You know, I, I see some trees coming out behind them, too, and I, you know me, I love overlapping. Plus, yeah, I, th I think the picture would, it would serve the picture better. So I'm going to take a little bit of stuff in the background. A little bit from back here and just kind of... I got that dark shadow there. I think I'm going to make that a little bit darker. Okay, just, just a little darker there. Maybe even this guy would, would create a little bit of a, a reflection. You could even take that diagonal there and why not? It's our painting. If you like, you could even burn out a little highlight on him. Not, 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 you know, I, I, still, I don't want to kill the silhouette, but I wouldn't mind having a little bit lighter on the right-hand side. I'm just taking a little bit of water and pulling that off. That's enough. Maybe a little shadow behind his leg there. You know, one thing I love, Turner will use these violets in his shadows. I forgot about that. I, he glazes them in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of violet in there. Maybe there's like a tree casting a little bit of a shadow over there or something like that. 
So what I did with that little line there is I'm just kind of describing the form of the land. Up and over, up and over. I call them directional shadows. All kinds of directional things in this piece. And you certainly could use a little gouache. Turner was not shy about using gouache. But like, you know, if I wanted to throw a little bit of uh, highlights in there, could. We have a minute or two. Let's see, do I have any people sending their stuff in already? Let's see. Nobody, somebody's interested in taking my class. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, and I, I always take a painting as far as I can like this before I add any gouache. Um, and of course, I just use the, the gouache for accents. This is why I, I, <laughs> I'll, I have a tube of gouache. I probably had this for a year because I just don't need very much. And I don't put it out on my palette, I just do it like this, like that. <laughs> I have a clean brush. And uh, let's say a little more water. I could. They don't have to be very dark or very light. If you just wanted a couple of accents, get it. If you don't like the white, don't put it in. Maybe a couple of little highlights. Oh, bright. I could even come back into some of these if I wanted to and hit. And throw some bushes over it. So I like those kinds of things. It can be a lot of fun. But that would be my light over dark. Um, and we have a couple of branches like this dark over light. But remember, we have all these little sky holes, watch. This goes really, really fast. Let's make up a, like a dark brown. Just gonna make up a dark brown. And then find yourself a little area where there might be, I mean, you certainly, I could do the same thing I did there. I don't think I'll do that. Um, but, so I think I'm gonna do these in the background, not so dark of a brown. But I could just watch, just, just, whoops. I could be a little darker. You never know how it's gonna look until you do it. See, just, just those little touches like that. They just feel like, like a million trillion little branches. You might even get one once in a while, just kinda Barely touching the surface there. 
it's too dark, I might lighten it up. Maybe in here too. That's usually where you see the dark ones. If you get a really dark one, maybe you'll see a dark one back here, but like it's possible if you have a really dark you, you might see one over like something like that. I just make them up. And they really stand out until you nestle them in. And we could hit some of these if we wanted. I lost a few of those. We lost a few of those in the battle. Okay. And what I like to do on the white ones is, you know, foliage will cast little shadows, see, like this. See how it makes it feel like it's going in and out? In and out. I'll do it back here too, just little areas of especially just on the top of it, just as it goes into the foliage, you'll get some shadows. And then I take some green foliage and I just kind of put it I just scruff it back over. So I can take out a lot of this. And you just get little hints of it. That is absolutely something I, I learned that by looking at Turner. And so many others. I mean, Turner would definitely is not the only, only one. But he really ended up teaching so many artists, other artists that I respect, too. So I figured I might as well go to the source. Just like that. So you just, just scrub right over them. I call this staging. So you, you use the background and the foreground to, to emphasize things you want to be seen and de-emphasize others. Are we about there, you guys? The 11.30 mark. Time for critique. So some of you are new. I should have mentioned this earlier, sorry. You'll see how we do it, but just, just send uh, me a picture. Try to take your picture upright so I don't, because I can't rotate it in there as I'm, uh, as I'm um, critiquing. Just send it, send, send it to me on your email and I'll critique it right here and we'll, um, you know, we all get in on it, we, we'll, but mostly just me. But oftentimes people will, or I might even ask people's advice on something. What do you think? I tell you what, if, if you're new and you haven't done it before, you can just watch me do I got I got some people already sending me stuff, so I'll critique them and you'll see how I do it and you'll you'll see it's no big deal. I'm gonna sign this. I'm gonna sign it right here.
pretty fun painting. Okay, everybody. Let's see what we've got going here now. Let's see where we are. I'm going to share the screen now. I guess it's this one. And Charlotte. Well, Hello. Can you hear? I almost didn't turn this in because it just was so bizarre. <laughs> I, I just felt like this today. Uh, the first one, do you, are you showing me the first one because you like the first one? No, the first one was just a little, you know, demo thing. Uh, yeah. Just a practice. Now, you do all these little dark little accents. Those are cool. Is that something you might have uh, been influenced by Charles Reed? I know he does a lot of those. Or do no, you no, no, it's like... um. I, uh, I I have a rigor and I just like to dance around with my brush and my paint, like dancing to me. But when she says rigor, you guys, she means a rigor brush. That's the long, really long. Some people call it signature brush. Oh yes, yeah, but, so yeah. but I like to dance around with that. Um, it yeah. adding accents. Mm hmm. But I really loved your um, shadows. I'm not a shadow person. But I loved your shadows on the um, castle. So now that's another thing too, knowing what you like and what you don't like. You, you, yeah. if, you're sitting there, if you're thinking I'm not a shadow person, that, that just tells me that so tells me that you've done enough research, you know, and, and have enough experience painting just to know, you know, I've done shadows. I'm, I'm just not really a shadow person, you know. Well, plus when I'm outdoors, the shadows change so fast. If I don't get them down right away. And then I'm still looking and the shadows have moved, it becomes confusing. Yeah. But this is like, uh, it, it, to me, this was just a painting I didn't, uh, a, of a castle. Well, what's and it wrong got that? Dark in the middle, I couldn't, I added gouache, but I couldn't get light again. I lost the light in the middle area. Yeah. And you have the dark over the light, and you see it came over with the light over the dark. Cool. It was fun. It's very exciting to have these uh, classes, Rob. <laughs> Thanks. You know, also, uh, just, just one little comment here. Um, I like this diagonal you have right here. Well, I like to lead people into the painting and around. Right. You got, you got a little diagonal there. They, they work. There's a zigzag at the bottom covering up an incorrect palette knife scratch. <laughs> so you used a palette knife? Yes. I used palette knife, some pastel and gouache here and there. I don't see the pastel. It's um, down in the bottom of the water. Aha, uh -huh. ah. Very cool. I don't know. They become mixed media. They're just, it's so much fun that I can't. No, I'm, I'm totally open to that. So, so much I don't have fun. any problem. I like mixed media. That looks like a watercolor to me. I mean, you've got a lot of watercolor things going on in it, so. Well, in your classes, I started to use a little mixed media with the gouache yeah. and the pastel on top. Yeah. To bring back some of the whites. But it's a study, it's just a study, you know, but yours was so beautiful and normal. It's like you were right there. Well, thanks. Did you say normal? Yeah. <laughs> to, me, to me, that's a normal, like, paint. Thank it's you. Like traditional. Normal. <laughs> a traditional watercolor painting. Yeah, that, that's, you know, that, that Turner, I mean, I know Turner can get really way out, but he also does very, very traditional things. I mean, but yours is just beautiful. I mean, be just a beautiful rendition of that castle. 
especially in the middle area where you've got the shadow going around that tower. It's just like you want to just go in there. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could. Thank you. Like that. I'm not that kind of a painter, I guess. It's okay. <laughs> I want to do some other things too. I want to do some really modern things in here this time. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's see what we got now. Well, wow, everybody's turning them in. So you see, to see how this is the way we do it. You just, I mean, this is nicely cropped too. You don't have to do it this nice. This is really nice. But sending them to me like this, I can, um, I can, everybody can see it very clearly. It's very well lit. But as you can see, some people won't send them in this nice, and that's fine. As long as I can see it, I can give you a critique. So on this one, I'm thinking. But all I did was I was using like a hard, pal I just bought like a little small palette of hard, you know, watercolor blocks. And I just was sort of playing. So I was just kind of uh -huh. getting into the, and I actually did it in a sketchbook. So it wasn't on watercolor paper. So it was a little harder. <laughs> You're, you're fighting it a little bit, huh? I was fighting it, but I was just using, I wanted to try to do your trees and just, you know, play with the colors and shapes and stuff. Well, that's what we're here for. Uh, I'll say um, you've got a lot of nice color. And what, one, one thing I like here is that you're, you've got this sort of yellow thing here, blue, strong statements of red, yellow, and blue. Yeah. Moving on, even, even in your very delicate area up here, I still see little red areas, cool areas, you know, yellowish areas. So, and then this is pretty cool. Is this just like a stump? That's just like a stump. I didn't, I didn't do a guy. You know, a stump would have been just as good, easy. I would have, I don't have that much imagination or, or would have thought of. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I could see is um, uh, a little more light, like yeah. lighter values in this. So if we lighter in here, yeah. maybe, maybe a few of these, just a little more contrasty. Yeah, I agree. You're you're in the middle quite a bit, and you do have some pretty decent darks in here. So if you wanted to, you could take some gouache and highlight those, or you could just leave it. I mean, it's it's nice the way it is. I'm just showing you subtle ways that I think maybe you could improve it. Like, um, I agree. I feel like my values always are the same, so that's a good hint. Yeah, and then maybe a little darker shadow. Maybe even, I mean, I, I hate to use black, but I don't have anything darker. So a little little darker, you know, I don't, I don't know if this had a little something. No, it didn't. So think of those things. I think something was casting a shadow over here or something like that over it. Um, so we get a little more punch. I might punch this area a little darker in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. I mean, darker, darker, you know. So we get a little, I'm just looking for, uh, we're kind of in a lot of, a lot in the middle values. Right. And uh, I want lighter in some areas, like maybe more shimmer on this, on the, the water. Although I will say that right here does feel like a reflection. Really nice. So maybe, you know, just, uh, whoops, some of that water. What about just the whole front end of the water? Take it almost very, very light the whole way through. Yeah. Sure. Or yeah, just you, you could just take some uh, dry brushing with the white. It looks good. It looks just as good as what I did. Just dry brushing white on there. Okay. If if you don't have a problem with using white. No, I don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it's, it's just contrast mainly. Okay. Thank you. And. Where are we? That was Judy. Sorry, sorry, Judy. Um, we got. Oh. Okay, Michelle. 
Cool. See, also you could just you could just anybody who hasn't done this before, you could just take your photo just like this. This works fine. <laughs> you, you, you don't have to crop it and everything. Although that that's that's really nice. I'll do it next time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. It looks really orange. Yeah, mine got I pretty. Well, I, I think lie. the thing to do is like what you did here. Let's see, where's my little, where's my drawing tool? Uh, if you took a little bit of, see these little blues? Yeah. Just subtly glaze a few little blues in there. That'll, that'll break it up. You're just looking to break it up here a little bit. The blue will go over the orange and create a gray. So, and just right over all the details and shadows and or kind of just here and there. I would lay down maybe just a very little water first, very light water, and then just fade in a few little blues and that'll break up that orange for you. Okay. Yeah. Is this on hot press paper? This is the um, mineral mineral paper. Uh, You're on Fabriano. mineral paper? The Fabriano. I two six four mixed media. Uh -huh. oh, okay, it looks not. And it looks like uh, mineral paper. <laughs> nice. What's oh, the, the twelve sixty four. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I'm using. Or oh, that's what I was using for my little demo or my my little value sketch. Okay, now you're you're you you really smack some darks in here. That's nice. <laughs> Maybe overly contrasty a little bit. Yeah. I save those darks for the foreground. Gotcha. On the other hand, it looks nice. This is the thing. It, it looks nice. <laughs> so. Yeah. Something we do is uh, where, like right here, at the base. Yeah. Um, it gets a little stark, and so I, I'll uh, I'll throw in a few. Oops, let's see. A few um, trees of green, not maybe not that high, but just something over the bottom, breaking yeah. it up here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe only that high or something, but just just something breaking up that stark area. I think that's about it. I love this groovy way to use the watercolor over there. Yeah. I want to do more of that too. This was just sort of Turner-esque, you know, masterly. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. And we go to Claire. Hi. Hi. Nice to see ya. Nice to see you too. I can't see ya, but I, I see your picture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and. Okay, I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a little darker at the base. Um, over here, possibly. Just give it a little pop, like in there, and that brings it forward. See, um, possibly there, maybe a reflection there. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, forget that. Um, you see how your your trees just come right up to, but they don't overlap. Uh huh. So I would take a few, right behind. Maybe even over. Maybe even over on the other side. I take it. I don't mind having a little sky coming through, but. But, we need a little overlapping. I think. Okay. Otherwise, it just it almost you know. It it does happen once in a while, but in nature, usually you'll get a little follow through there. Yeah. And then I, I look for angles. See how this angle just, just kind of is almost in a straight line? Yeah. I would just take a little bit, just take a little bit more and break that up a little bit. Just, just take, maybe take the shadow in. We're, we're looking for a less regular line, more like that, you know. Okay. Just bumps up and down a little bit more. 
it, it's it's a very simple fix. Just just take some background into it, take some foreground over the background, so so you break up any kind of lines. I, I do it every painting, and I have to come back and do that. Yeah. Okay. About it. So if this is going to have a shadow, you know, maybe I should have done it on mine too. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, I guess you do have a little shadow down there, don't you? Oh, okay. Slick. <laughs> Uncorrected. A little bit. And now I'm looking at mine going, maybe I should have put a shadow on mine, darn it. And again, um, I might throw a shadow like over the wall here or something, or maybe over this dirt or something. If you take some of this grass and pull it up and over the dirt, or the I guess that's a wall right here, pull a little bit of grass up and over it, it'll feel like it's behind things. Yeah, it didn't really read as a wall, though. Yeah, I think you have to, maybe you take some foliage and put it behind it, take some foliage and pull it over the front of it. Okay. It'll probably read a little bit better. I, I left mine out, so... Okay. Okay. Nice sky too. Look at the red, look at the yellow, red, blue. Nice. I like the sky the best, I think. <laughs> it's fun. We need to do a wet into wet painting. Um how about how about that next week? <laughs> now, now I'm gonna put that down so I can remember. I have my little thing for next week here. Um yeah, wet. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that. See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by your sky. Ah, uh, thanks. You're welcome. So much that that's what we're gonna do next week. Okay. Oh, you taped off the edges. Oh, nice. Hi, Rob. Hello. And I feel like I could do more, but I felt like I needed to stop. Yeah, wait, 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 wait a second. Sorry. I'm sorry. Who am I speaking to? Liz. Liz, I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. Hey, the one in Florida. I forgot to hit your name. Um, okay, nice color. Nice contrast. I, I got stuck on the right, but I just stopped. Maybe we could pull, pull some of this down. Some of this uh, foliage. Oh, cool. Thank you. And that, that'll make you feel like it's overlapping. You could even pull some a little bit over things. And that'll make you feel like it's more in the foreground. And I don't know if you want to use white or not, but... Um, yeah, I did. I just felt like I still had more to do. You could pull a little land outcropping into it a little bit, so that, that'll give your river a little more ins and outs. Cool. So Should even I take if you a picture of this, or will you send the video? I'll send the video. Now, are you sending it to our emails, or on the Google... Do we find, go to a Google link? <clears throat> I'll, I'll send it to your email, then you go to a Google link and you can download it from there. Okay, thank you so much. I'll stop interrupting. Me. Actually, um, it's a Zoom link, excuse me. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah, just, just a little more foreground, maybe some outcroppings of land here. And, and I can see some stronger shadows in your, in your building. A little, little, maybe not, maybe a little. Yeah. Just a little bit, little bit stronger values. Thank you. Take a look at them. They might not be that stripey, but I can't get the right value with this this tool. That it's pretty good. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Liz. And Ethel, Ethel, did you send me more than one? Sometimes you do. <laughs> okay. Let me get my drawings off your thing. Hey, now you all don't have to go this far with it and give me a mat on there and everything, but you see what that does. I like your fishermen on the boats. What is that like, uh, Lewis and Clark over there? <laughs> no. 
Hey, hey. Oh, pretty cool. What do you think? It's a nice looking watercolor. Stands by itself very nicely. I think this was a good move, taking some things up and over. Uh, Ethel, you're, I can't hear you. Maybe. Um... I'm muted. Huh. There you How go. did that happen? Anyway, my original plan was to make the sky darker. Now I'm thinking yeah. I probably should glaze over the castle and make it a little darker so it recedes. But. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So what recedes? The castle. It, it's too imposing, at least to my eye. Yeah, that doesn't bug me. Yeah. And it's probably too dark, but yeah. Yeah, just a little bit, yeah. You know, and if you use a lot of glazes on it, you'll get little interruptions and stuff that kind of feel like stones. <laughs> so Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll, yeah, that might work. Yeah. Lots of little glazes, I think, would work. So, and uh, the way you, uh, you snuck in this foreground over the background. Yeah. Done. Very, very nicely done. Thank you. That's, that's, give, see how that just gives you depth. Yeah. All right. I guess uh, I could maybe, if you want to, hit a couple of lights in your darks here. Yeah, probably. I kept putting more dark and yeah. I, I was losing my cohesion, so then I went in real dark underneath. Yeah. Oh, so maybe I'll do that. I can scratch it in somehow. Or yeah, I mean, here and there, and then I throw foliage over them. But yeah. even in here, sometimes I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'll try that. And this is a good move here. Take you took a few things up and over your castle. You know, I could even see a little bit more. But yeah, just to yeah, give that overlapping. Of, it had like a straight line going across, and I didn't like that. So. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, Betsy. Okay, so you got into the white there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, my castle. Left out. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. I like I say. I, I put my guy in there. You didn't need yours. Looks just fine without it. So, yeah, it's just a move. Um, and you got some yellow on your castle. I see. Yeah. Give it a little paint job there. <laughs> you know, if 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 the yellow is a little too much. Yes. And it doesn't have to be. I mean, Turner would do that. I, I've seen some of his architecture where it just. Just, um, you know, it'll look later in the day, which could very well be. Mm -hmm. And that could be really fun to play with, too. If you wanted to subdue those a little bit, I would just add very, very little, um, like a lavender color to it. And then okay. that, should, that should mute it down, if you wanted to do that. I think it looks good. And I really like the way you handled all your foliage. Very watercolory. Oh, good. Thanks. All the, <clears throat> I see all the watercolor moves in there. They're very nice. Um, right. Now, if the whites are standing out a little much, mm -hmm. I just, I just, whoops, wrong color. Um, I use, I just use a little bit of color to, to knock them back here and there. Okay. Might even just especially on the tops when I when I when it, let's say over here at the top, I might put a little bit of shadow right over the tops because that almost it almost acts like it's going up into the foliage like up there. Yeah. So that's where I hit them. I might tag a couple of little shadows uh -huh. along things as well because who knows maybe foliage is casting a shadow. I just do it here and there where I like to because almost anything can happen in those shadows. Right. So I think uh, these are looking good. Did you have any questions? 
Well, the castle looks all tilty and weird. And does it look okay? Or does it look anchored? When you no, I, that doesn't. Oh, I see. Because this one's tilted this way. I mean, yeah, it's kind of wonky. Or do I need yeah more contrast? Like what you're doing now. Does that help anchor it better? Yeah. Okay, see now. Watch. I put my shadow down this way. See. So I I kind of countered that a little bit. And then what you do is, you take a little off here, and you add a little right there. Oh, I see what you're doing. So you're straightening it. Yeah. You're white. It's very simple. Yeah. So if that's if, if, if you wanted to make that correction, you know, you could argue it's a castle. <laughs> Lost its foundation. So. Yeah, it's falling apart. Yeah. So there's that as well. I might go a little stronger with these shadows. A little, a little, okay. a little darker. Um. And then. Don't be afraid to just overlap it. Really, really take things over. So overlap onto the grassy front area. Um, yeah. Like you have these trees here, maybe, yeah, just, just take them right, right over the castle. Got it. A little more deliberate. It could be bushy things or whatever. Just, we're just looking, I'm, I'm looking for his. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, more of an overlap. The castle to be, yeah, just get nestled in a little bit. Okay. And I, I, you know, I threw a couple of shadows over these areas as if, as if the light is more coming from this direction. Mm -hmm. So shadows can make a nice di little difference. Okay. I think. All right. Makes nice watercolor marks. I love those. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we're at Diane. Diane went for her shot, but she wants her critique. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, Diane, nice overlapping. Really get a sense of depth in this piece. Um, your guy is maybe a little far over in the corner here. I mean, I would, I would go. It's not bad though, but ideally, and I wouldn't. I, I mean, I, I don't know if you can change that, but I, I probably wouldn't do it. But uh, around this area, I think it might be a little bit better. Would it help to put a second one in? Um. Yeah, I have a whole group of fishermen in there. Now, now, actually, if you did have a couple of other things, like a stump or something over here, a couple of little issues, it probably would balance out it's just, just fine. So, yeah. Could be a couple of people in there. Could, you could have two two people in boats right here. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, I thought of that all on my own. I uh, I would probably increase the contrast. Some of these, I think these ones are probably okay. These get a little light over here. I might just increase the contrast. Maybe over this one too, and really bend it. Really bend that around your um, your uh, thing there, and you know a real soft edge here. But yeah, the. So it feels round. Nice trees, love it. This one feels a little bit in a perfect little ball. So I might just just take a couple little outies in there. You know, you got that one. A couple little little outcroppings, shall we say? Make it look a little little more natural. Beautiful clouds. I think I think it's looking pretty good. Wow, this this tree right here is beautiful. Um, it almost feels like a reflection in the water right there. Beautiful. If anything, maybe you could take some of those down into it. 
you could um, a reflection if you like might work having said that maybe maybe a little more contrast in these reflections just a thought okay beautiful it looks very English let's see and Cynthia oh no no uh, Eileen Hey, Rob, I did send you my, okay. my picture. This is Cynthia. Oh, you did? Is that you? Yeah. Wait, this is Cynthia. It says plain air wins. Yeah, image. Try to image zero. Oh, that's it. Okay. I thought it was something else. Thank you. Okay. Oh, by, by the way, let me, let me get, go back to Eileen uh, real quick. Eileen, this is kind of tilted. Could you give me another photo where you're you're taking it from another different direction so it's not tilted like that? Sure. Sure, I'll try right now. Okay. And I'll go back to Cynthia first here. Okay, Cynthia. Here we are. Nice looking, nice looking color. I think a nice composition. I'm just wanting a little more punch out of it, that's all. And now, one thing you did really nicely here is you do have your most contrast in the, um, I can see what you're doing here. So she has focal point one, focal point two, focal point three. Um, and that, that, that does work. I, I still would think maybe we could have, uh, you know, it won't create too much of a focal point if you had a little more contrast back here, mostly mm -hmm. in your darks. And then really, I would just blast blast some dark over in here, really, really dark. I think the idea of this was just to get a little more, a little more overlapping. There we go. So we get this, this feeling like it's really in front of that. And you wanted this to feel nice and far away. Again, see how these line up into into a perfect ball. I would, I would just take a few of them out. That's all. Just just you know, here comes another raw board. Ready? Irregularize it. <laughs> Make it less regular. You know, that's all. Um, hi, you know, your guy down here looks great. Fishing. Nice little reflection. If you want more shimmer, you could add a little white, and now that's up to you. But, uh, whoops. A little more shimmerage. So I'll leave that up to you. And then if you wanted to take some of these darks down into the water as a reflection, you know, mm -hmm. a few of those too. Yeah, I, I thought maybe like the, the two sides were too dark, but then when they dried, it just kind of lightened up a lot. It does. They'll do that. They, they, they always do that. It's watercolor, you know, you just have to. I, mean, I mean, you know, most people expect a watercolor to be light like this. So, <clears throat> and I, I'm just thinking of picture quality, um, just just for a picture. But I like your you you've got good thinking in this piece. I mean, with your focal points, it, it does. You do go to your focal points, so. I I do a little photography. Oh, so you, then you know exactly. I try what to put some about. of that yeah. aspect on there. Yeah. So all of those rules, those those rules were born in painting. They all apply to painting. Um, any questions? Excuse me. 
No, it's just, yeah, you were, I think uh, I do need to darken up some of the stuff. Uh, I feel like the, the range of colors is, I mean, I have the whites, but I think I need to darken up some of the stuff because it's not. Yeah, a little, little pop. Yeah. And that's what always happens at the end of a painting, any painting, you know, you, you dial it in. And this is actually, as far as watercolors go, you don't have anything really overly dark. Um, so you can keep darkening. Mm -hmm. It's when you get way too dark, then it's hard to fix. So, but anyway, I think it looks great. I might go a little darker with a shadow here. Okay. I mean, as a cast shadow. And then what do you think about overlapping some of this? Yeah, yeah. If you'll notice, uh, I'll, I'll say a lot of the same things to people. And that's what's so nice about watching all different crits. You see how, what, what a person did and how they solved the problem and what, what the crit, how the crit goes. And maybe you could use some of that in yours. So, we'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got, oh, that's, there's, okay, there's Eileen. Did, did you send it again? I okay. did. Oh, you sent it twice. There you go. Everybody does that, by the way. You know, we, we all have to learn that and then, and then, and then we, we know. So, let me, right. you know. Okay. Pretty cool. Lots of nice paint going on there. Lots of nice value going on there. Um, let's see here. Just compositionally, we've got this and this, almost above this and this. Not not exactly, but it, it sort of forms something kind of symmetrical feeling. Oh. So that, and that's just compositionally. Um, yeah. I can show you ways to pull it off. Okay. Uh, so. I might with these two, I might just sort of play with the edges. Play with the, you make them less, they're so attracting to the eye, I don't think they need to be. Okay. So I might play them down a little bit with the edges. Um, try brush the edges possibly. And then, I mean, you got a nice way with color. I love these blues and violets you have in the, that's great. This feels very reflective right here. Um, Thank you. So then a little, maybe possibly a little more contrast here. I mean, right now we're losing this, we're losing the building into the sky. So one way or the other, I could either make the sky darker and make, keep this bright, which I, would, I wouldn't advise doing that. I think the, the best decision was to go with this a little bit darker and keep the sky light. Yeah, while you were, while you were talking earlier, I, I took a sponge and I lifted color from the top of the wall. So it wasn't, it was actually darker before, but I didn't uh -huh. like it. And then I didn't paint it back in. So Right there? Yes. <laughs> I just lifted color from there. So, so go back in. I, I would just, you know, just take that and make it a little bit darker. Okay. A little bit. And if it's not enough, you just, just put another glaze on it. Okay. This is nice, the way you're silhouetting that. I might go a little bit, I would take, I would definitely take this dark you have right here. And mm -hmm. um, I'd definitely take that and possibly carry it over, over to here. Now, now you may have a problem. Is, is this gonna be the same value as that? So well, I went ahead and, uh, uh, like something like that I think is okay. Just leave this, this a little bit darker on its own. But here's what happens if if you put something right there and then you take this right behind it, you kind of it, it, it gets kind of lost. Okay. So I would do something more like that. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, I think that'll work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go back to. Great, Jane. Oh. Clear. All right, you went with the height. 
I it realize more, it's not a lot more vertical and more height to it. I like it. What do you think? Well, I think. I mean, I, I think Diane was so wonderful with all the dark she had. Yeah. I think maybe the area on the left should be more dark. I Before, agree. I, I think this this. And you know that's the that's probably the number one critique of most watercolors is you know we need some nail some more darks, so that's that's typical in a watercolor. Just so just um, now, by the way, I think the dark you have behind here though is just fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you want, take some of this green behind here. Right. If if you like. Extend it. Um, yeah. But yeah, some more darks and down into your shadows, I think is a good move. I like this, this was a good move. You get that feeling of overlapping. Um, maybe mm -hmm. even a darker silhouette of something here in the foreground, just to give us a little bit more depth. Right. So we could maybe try that. Let's see. Other than that, I mean, you're doing well. Your your clouds look great. They look really cloudy. Right. Maybe what do you think Good. of some stronger <laughs> uh, shadows in your building here? Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Maybe these are okay, but maybe at least here. So, so here. Yeah. And I like your guy fishing right there. You you could even put a little sh reflection down there, or maybe a shadow behind him or something. Um, uh, uh -huh. small little things, but, and you could put a little fishy, right? No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I think, I think that's about it now here. Okay. Um, you see how this piece of land almost feels like it's floating a little bit. Yeah. So what I'll do is probably what would happen here is you might get a really subtle little reflection there. So mm. I would just take like some of the brown you see in there and just, just put a little bit below it. In the water, yeah. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, it'll kind of ground it a little more, that's all. So, okay. thank you. Hey, thank you, Rob. You are welcome. And where are we? We're at, there's Jane, we're at Gina. Hey, Gina. Hi there. Yeah, that's a Gina right there. <laughs> Thick and and rich and chocolate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. I was less interested in the castle than the trees, as you can see. Right. You know, I, I love to overwhelm um, the the architecture with nature. I, I always think it works. This looks great to me. I, I, you know, I didn't even really think about that you were doing that. Yeah. I'm like that. I don't mind painting structures as long as they're tucked into the landscape. Yeah. Is really this tucked in. Cover? <laughs> no, yeah. this is acrylic. It's acrylic. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, this, this class, I, I open it up to all, even if you wanted to work in oil, I, I serve, I don't care, but, um, you know, more, more water mediums, most likely. So acrylic, you can use acrylic just like watercolor, but uh, Gina chooses to uh, slather it on like she's, like she's. Uh, I think it's great, I, it's fantastic. Yummy. You know, by the way, um, what you can do, and then you, when it's dry, you could take a glaze. Let's say, for instance, your light's coming from, you know, not just the right side, but maybe the right front. So possibly things could be casting little shadows over the front here. You might get a little bit of a, like a glaze. Mm -hmm. That's something you, you, you can do in oils, but it takes forever to, to dry. Um, mm -hmm. So you could take like shadows up and over things. Now that is absolutely classically Turner. Turner would do his paintings very light first when he's working opaque like this, let them dry and then glaze in his shadows. Um, you know, uh, 
So there's a what a reason to go down to the museum and just look at a Turner for a while and, and think, oh, I mean, he would literally spackle them on with a palette knife. You know, there weren't very many artists that did that before him. Maybe Rembrandt. I can't think of many artists that did that before him. Guardi, possibly. Some of the Baroque painters are pretty, pretty crazy. But anyway, you might want to think about glazing in a couple of shadows here and there. Like, they're kind of fun. I mean, I know you don't like to work on top of your fresh. Your yeah, I, fresh I don't think that. When I'm done, I'm like, okay, move on. Yeah, you're done. I'll do another one. Yeah. I tell you what, it looks good though. I've, I've, I've definitely done it. And, and well, I mean, this is acrylic. It's dry already. I could go back in as soon as I'm done on most of it. Yeah. Maybe some darker shadows if you think, if you think. Besides that, I, I think it looks great. Love all this kind of action right in here. I added all that, that thick spackly stuff. I added that orange in at the end. I just thought it needed a little more color. Oh, you did, huh? Wow, I think that would look bland without that orange. It did. <laughs> well, good move. Isn't that funny how those instincts, sometimes you can't see it until you get it mostly done. And then those instincts kick in and you go, oh, I think it needs a little of this, it needs a little of that. Yeah. I think what I'm liking about this area right here is just the full range of value. You've got extremely dark, extremely light, and in the middle. So, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. So yeah, just so you, just for anyone new, uh, I, I have no problems with people working big or thick impasto, it's totally fine with me. All right, thank you, Gina. You're welcome, thank you. Toby, very light. Now this is what people, I mean, people on the street that, you know, when they've heard of watercolor, this is what they think of. Very, very light, 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 light. And you know, I think Turner, this is more mature Turner right here with a very atmospheric. Um, I think I, when I did my interpretation, I was thinking, um, you know, probably more of his early stuff. And um, but you're really pushing the atmosphere. Very, very nice. I have. I think that looks very Turner-esque to me. Thanks, Rob. Great. Uh, I, I don't know if I do anything to this piece. What do you? <laughs> no, I I stop because uh, yeah. I always go a little too far. But um, yeah. I'm happy. Thank you. Yeah, very light and atmospheric. Yeah, I might have got too too caught up into the photograph. I I think I was just inventing my own thing. But yeah, this is really this this feels more inspired by Turner than than mine does. I think. Especially all the really, um, the really soft edges you're getting in here and here. Very, very, very atmospheric. Very, very much what you would expect out of a Turner. Great, thank you. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Sign it. Put it in a frame <laughs> on your wall. <laughs> oh, great, wow, thank you. Sell it or give it to somebody or whatever. All right. <laughs> it's a beauty. How big is it? Um, it's eight by ten. Oh, nice and big. Yeah, I that's the size I all my paper is. So yeah. I might pin that up in the studio or just just keep it out and keep looking at it. I wouldn't do anything to it though, but just and if you have a frame or anything, you can put it in. You know, it always looks better when it's matted in a frame. So. Okay. You know. Good advice. That sounds good. <laughs> I know. It's about all the advice I could give you on this. <laughs> oh, okay. Get it in a frame, hurry, <laughs> sign it. And if Wonderful. you do sign it, you know, maybe sign it very lightly. Some people just, they don't want to ruin it, so they'll sign it on the back. Yeah, I don't, I'm a non-signer because I'm non -signer. always afraid of something like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Wonderful. You know, sometimes I'll leave an area light or dark just because I know I'm going to throw a signature there. Mm. Okay. Great. Hey. Thank, thank you so much. Marie. Uh, Rob, would you, I have um, another one. 
Uh, it says castle number two. It's yes. Thank there you. There it is. There you go. Nice layout. Yeah, nice layout. It really lays out nice. Yeah. I like that you cropped more in on it. I think that was a good move. Um, yeah, the, the color, the, the color and the value of the building really pop off the sky. Yeah, the one before it was too wimpy. It, the value was about the same as the sky, so I hit the value. So that is that the same painting you just came yeah, back? Yeah, oh. right, yeah. So you cheated. I did. I just kept on looking at it going, it's wimpy, it's wimpy, but you know. Anyway. You gotta make it strong. What, what's the difference? What are we talking about when we say wimpy and strong? I don't even know. Maybe no. more contrast or? Yes, yeah, it has no <laughs> pizzazz. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, nice trees behind here, very nicely done. If anybody's wanting to do this, Putting the trees behind the castle right there, I think that was a good move. So uh, there's another example of doing it well. Mm -hmm. I like the way you overlapped the foliage over the castle. That really works. Good. I mean, well, are you having any issues with this? I think it's looking pretty well, good. Well, it's not my favorite, but it's, you know, I wish it looked more like a Turner. I should look at I know, that. that's the only problem I'm having with mine too. I'm, thinking, I'm looking at the whole thing thinking, I should have gone lighter and more delicate. Yeah. Maybe off that. Um, maybe Toby was looking more at uh, Turner's actual work, and maybe I should have done that too. <laughs> Did you ever work with uh, Bridget Duffy at Disney? Why does that sound familiar? Oh, well, she worked there for years doing what you did, I think. Huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, that was a long time ago. Okay. I haven't been over there since the uh, late 90s, uh, but that, that name, oh, that sounds really familiar. Well, she paints and she's in a lot of shows too. So maybe you've seen her name, you know, around. Huh, okay, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really have much to say, except maybe, <laughs> maybe possibly, see how this tree right here sticks out? I'm sorry, I can't, we're, okay, that. Let, let me, let me get a little. On there. I might throw a couple of shadows over it, maybe a little bit of foliage. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. A little here and there. Yeah. I love your look at the duality, everybody. Look look how she has the dark on the light. And then right right in back of it, she's got the light on the dark. Very, very nice. Very, very clever. Oh. Well, it just happened. <laughs> oh, very humble. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you need any more contrast in that. Okay. Very okay. nice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we're at, it's cool. Ooh. All right. Hi, Bob. Now that feels very Turner-ish too. You were looking at Turner, weren't you? No. No? But I, I wanted to put that rock in front, uh, like a cliff. Yeah. Left. That's neat. Yeah, I was intrigued by the by that shape of rock, but uh, maybe it's too boring. Maybe I should have cave in or something. Um, it's too uh, boxy. <laughs> Oh, you know, if it looks too boxy, just yeah, just I, I can see you're doing it already. I would just take some foliage. Uh, what's wrong color? Uh, down the side. Mm -hmm. Just take some stuff down the side, over overgrowing it. That always works. Oh yeah. Some stuff off the side there. I mean, use a better color than what I'm using, but I don't have much. And then uh, you know, in the base right here. For all this foliage, uh, I I would I feel like there would be a lot of shadow d deep down in there, so I might. Now, if you don't want to get dark, leave it light, and very because these light colors, like right in here, are feeling very Turner-like. Mm. Uh, yes, in that sense, I I try to copy that. At, yeah. at the end, I just I just put it all uh, right color on it. Yeah. 
on the whole thing. Maybe that's that's what we do, huh? And very atmospheric in here. I could see maybe a little more shadows. Mm -hmm. Some of these, not this dark, but. Uh -huh. And so you got one, two, three trees here. What I would do is maybe just take a little, a little bit of foliage and break that up a little bit. Oh, okay. Just kind of, yeah, just, just do this, what you're doing right there, a little, little dry brushing mm -hmm. over the front. You know, there could very well be three trees, but usually they don't stand out like that. So I, I'll just break it up a little bit. What do you think about this? Uh, these rocks right here. Do you think they should be lighter? I don't know. What do you think? I put some uh, white here and there. Yeah. Did it dry a lot darker? Right, like a gray or something. Yeah, that's all I was thinking. Maybe something like that. All right. That's about it. And, you know, you could possibly maybe if if you like, it might ruin the lo the luminosity. But uh, I could see a strong shadow here. Uh huh. If you get two two darker shadows, then you might ruin your um, your Turner esque kind of light 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 thing. So be careful. Okay. But, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Mm -hmm. There's Henry. Henry. Hi. Hey. Hi, um, Mr. Ko, I like the cuttle mm. of the rocks, the boulder rocks yeah. in the water. I was trying to do that, but you got better rhythm than mine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Your water looks great. Some nice water. Uh, nice, nice looking castle. <clears throat> now here, just compositionally speaking, um, we have a, a lot of moves. Let's see. We have a lot of things going this direction. Mm -hmm. Like this and this and this. I'm wondering, yeah, you know, yeah. if we had like a diagonal or something, like a stump or a stick, or mm -hmm. they don't have to be really big. I stop, like something. Mm -hmm. Like this is kind of functioning as an I stop for this. Yeah, I was thinking to uh, do the front, uh, the f the front ground with a uh, tall uh, tree, like the black white join you had sent us. In yeah, the front, yeah. In, on the corner, would that help to? Yeah. Uh, just, just yeah, do a giant. Um, I think I, 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 you can, s yeah, this, just like uh, this black white picture. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have these four rocks are evenly spaced. Yeah, that's my problem. I, I talked to earlier. Every, everybody has that problem. So what I would do is. Uh, <clears throat> You know, when you're putting your 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 tree or whatever in there, just think about that and maybe yeah, just cover that. It, okay. it might solve the problem. Uh -huh. Maybe the tree might absolutely solve the problem, but um, so okay, I think I'll, about I'll that. do that. Pretty loose for you, yeah. Woo, that's <laughs> loose. I mean, I don't know if that's loose for you. You're pretty loose, but I I have a looser one. If you look at my table, the first one, first. Uh, hey, look at one. that! I yeah. see it. You see that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just Very blue the... in the background. Mm -hmm. Now, that's nice. That it gives you a lot of atmosphere back there. Yeah. Yeah. I just used two colors basically. Yeah. Well, what? Well, that was your first attempt. Yeah, that's my first attempt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I could probably see something maybe, but I think when you put that, I don't know how big you're going to make that tree. Yeah, so. we, yeah it probably would be uh, all the way to the top. Is that? Oh, uh, okay. Then, yeah, yeah. Th that'll probably solve it then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Rob. Just so you know, everybody, that that's Henry uh, for for you new people. Uh, Henry is the one that he owns um, Blue Heron Arts. And so, if you need any brushes or whatever, yeah, I I thank uh, Rob for referring to the yeah. Um, he, he's where I get all my brushes. <laughs> yeah, and where I it's, it's, it's Eileen. I got I got my brushes already, Henry. Thank you so much. Thank I you love everybody them. for ordering. Really the fast brushes. shipping, <laughs> like the next day. I love them. Thank you. Henry, Henry doesn't mess around. Um, no. I. So you know, if, I think you all have his name. Maybe you might want to put your. Uh, uh, the web page in the in the chat there. Oh, I yeah, I will do that. Like Henry, for anybody. That I I'll, I'll spell the the uh, page. I'll give you the link directly to the General Ones uh, brush that uh, our teacher. Oh yeah, thank recommend. you. Sometimes it's, it's hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I will send a direct link to the brush you I'm endorse. So thank you. There's Debbie. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Debbie. You know, there's a nice basic watercolor right there. It's got a lot of nice effects. You got some nice wet into wet in the background, some dry brushing, a lot of, I mean, it's got a lot of good, solid, basic things going for it. For instance, you notice how you didn't noodle all the trees, but you just, you treated it as a big mass. And uh, that's that's the way to paint in watercolor because if you don't paint that way, then you won't get all this good water. Look at you're getting all these little bloom marks in there, some dry brush crumbly marks there. You're getting the wet and the wet little things. Um, you're doing a little bit of glazing with your shadows, but Debbie's but not here, but she wanted the crit, so thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I, I think what I would do is maybe if you don't want to get too dark, then then I wouldn't do this really dark, but I might put something over and bring it right up and over this tree over here in the background. Something in the foreground. Because I can't tell right now what's these these colors and values are almost the same. So what I'm looking for is a little overlapping. So um it could very well be that all you need is just a little bit, little bit of something just a touch darker up here in the foreground. A little silhouette. What else? <clears throat> Maybe a rock or two right around here. You know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a person. I think mine started off to be just being rocks. And then people put boats in there and you guys put <laughs> um let's see what else yeah a little i think maybe a little stronger shadows I have a, I have a question, Rob, yeah. and I struggled with this myself. Um, and I'm and I should know this from your Tuesday class, but a cast shadow tends to be darker than something that's in shadow, right? You know, they, they tend to be. That's not a hundred percent, but they will tend to be a little darker. They'll tend to have a little sharper edge. Yeah, so they'll have a sharper edge. And it, right here, this is on the form, so this would be a softer edge on this shadow. Uh, well, for the for the buttresses, yeah, I, I was thinking that the side of the buttress should be lighter than the shadow it cast. Uh, it is, it is, because you know what's happening, the uh, bounce light. Yeah, we call it just reflected light. Um, yeah. So. Okay. The light, the light's coming from this direction. It's uh -huh. boom, it's hitting there, and then it's bouncing yeah. into the right there. 
So that's what's making it, it's actually a lighter shadow up here and possibly uh, darker. I apologize to Debbie. I should have asked this yeah. when I got to mine, so scratch that. That's so, good. This is not. Because yeah. then when I get to you, I'll just go. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. We just talked about. Oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Remember that. And it looks like she got into some scratch scratchization right there. Nice. Um, you could use a little white if you want. Not necessary if you don't want. This looks a little bare to me where it's really sh flat right there. So I might throw some foliage up and over. We have really excellent examples of people doing that in the class that I think work. Another great way, reason to have the recording, just to look at all the different solutions. Maybe a little color in your clouds if you like. I can see a little pink in there. So maybe, maybe a little yellow. Feel free to even get stronger with your color if you like. OK, thank you. Uh, this is Gina. I just want to say I just put in a link to the Tate Gallery in London where they have this enormous Ooh. collection if people want to look at that. Yeah, I've, I went there. Yeah, I've been there. It's, <clears throat> it's unbelievable. So yeah, they, I mean, they're huge. You wouldn't believe how big they are. Yeah, and they have like 30,000 of his drawings and watercolors and stuff or some crazy number. <laughs> oh, prolific, yeah. In storage. Yeah. Anyway, I put the link up to the gallery. Thank you. It's always nice to have those. What else? Uh, okay. So, now the rocks and the posts down here in the uh, they um, because they have little cast shadows on them, they really stand out. So, if you didn't want these to stand out. You know, I'm sorry. I just saw your name and I, I didn't say it, did I? Or did I say your name? That was Debbie. We're at Alice, right? Yeah, okay. So if you didn't want these to stand out, I might like lighten up the shadow here a little bit, maybe even throw in some reflection. Um, just a little bit of a little, little bit of reflection might be nice. See, it looks like you're getting some there. You kind of see how they all, they all kind of fall into a line. So I try to look out for those things because it becomes really attracting in the piece. So just so you know. Um, there we go. You can see it better. And these look good. Castle looks good. All is good. I think I like how you pulled up the foliage over the castle. I like the light on the dark there. I noticed a few people put dark, like dark. Whoops. Like something dark or the light. If you're going to do something like that, make sure you include a little bit of a shadow. I can see a little more shadow because of the, your trees right here. I can see a little more shadow on the ground, possibly. This is a nice area right here. OK, sorry, I couldn't unmute. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I didn't know if you had to leave or not. I, I know I got an email from you saying you had to leave somewhere. No, I had hard. Okay. Oh, no, that's next and Monday. Oh, yeah, that's next. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. Um, any questions? Um, you know, my biggest problem is. Uh, I put way too much paint. It's, yeah. it's very heavy. It's like using acrylics. I, I have to keep trying. I'm, I don't know. It's just yeah. hard. <laughs> the way you get around that is to uh, you uh, use less paint. 
I'm just joking. <laughs> I tried to give you my uh, my brilliant idea right there. No. Oh, is that what it is? Just use less paint. Yeah, okay. use less paint and uh, maybe less water. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. If if you get if the so what happens is you can't see through the paint if you get it on too thick, and so uh, that's why we end up layering yeah. and layering. So sometimes I like it on there kind of thick, and sometimes I, you know, I like the duality of it getting a little bit opaque, but yeah. sometimes you need it kind of thick, like the light, like right up here, you need to cover, you know, so you... To start with uh, more water, less paint, and yeah. just glaze, go slow yeah. instead of... Um, yeah, le less water less paint i mean sometimes you need to have it you need to use a heavy hand on the darks but on the lights you very light you're doing it right. this is very watercolors right in there alice yeah i love this painting yeah oh this painting i mean is it is really like the greens they're really beautiful Thank you. Have you ever, you know, because of these shadows right here, this right here, yeah. all these uh, rocks and, okay, so they, I don't know why, but have you ever heard of this artist named DeKirico? Uh, DeKirico no. is, a, he's, he's this artist, uh, it's, it's called D-I, and then uh, like capital D-I, and then like C-H- Irico. <laughs> I don't know how to spell it right. Like I R Kiraco, Kirico, I C O or something like that. Yo. It it has a very um surreal look to it. Okay. I don't know why it reminds me of Takiriko, but just, just so you know, I mean take a look at Takiriko. Okay. Thank you. Just to show you, I'm not I mean he he's what's called a spiritualist. I don't think he, I think he's a sur, uh, a surrealist, but there's like different types of surrealists. And I think he falls into this category called a spiritualist or something, but they're very wow. beautiful paintings. Okay. I'll check it out. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's uh, Eileen. I think we, yeah, we already did. Eileen and Eileen and Marie and Phoebe. Nice photograph, Phoebe. All right. Really. Thank you. I mean, the way you cropped it. I mean, so nice. Okay, nice looking painting. Nice composition. Are I you using that junky paper? <laughs> am I using the what? How, how, what kind of paper are you using? Yeah, uh, uh, good that you mentioned it. Uh, this is the first time I've tried it. It's the um, Fabriano 1274. Oh, okay. It's their watercolor paper. Yeah, and what did you say, that junky paper? I don't know. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> well, it, you know, it's it, it ain't arches, but it's not all that bad. Yeah, I might, that, that, you know, I might, I might get that sketchbook and just use that as my sketchbook next time. Um, the, somebody was using the 1264 mixed media, which I think is miserable for watercolor. It's, it's okay to sketch on, but wow it doesn't take water this takes it better i'm i'm that's what i'm using it, it, it you just gotta have a very light touch it, i wouldn't i wouldn't do a water a full-on watercolor on it no I, I i just use it for sketching for for which the sketchbook or the watercolor paper um i'm using the 1264 uh just the regular sketchbook paper yeah yeah well this anyway. is the you this see is the, the, uh, figure. the very regular pattern in it, in the paper. Yes. That that's the thing I I, I look for that in papers. I like a more natural. Good uh, point. Natural, so you usually get that out of the higher quality papers, a little more uneven green, uh, grain to it. So, I you're absolutely right. I was cheap and I 
Ah. <laughs> it's you. the same thing with the with the Windsor lemon yellow. I, I thought you were the one that spent all the bucks on the really good on the really good stuff, huh? Yeah. You could use no. I mean, you could certainly use this. I mean, I, absolutely. But um, and you have arches, so whatever. But yeah, um, I I do. But uh, I would. You, I think you'll get better results on the other. So you got your in and out trees. You scratched them out, and you got the. See, that's a good. The way you did that on your trees over here. Um, is fantastic. Oh, thank you. I, I really struggle with trees. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to copy what you did, which was really instructive. Um, I, instead of a, an X-Acto blade, though, I used a credit card, which I find... There you go. Yeah. A credit, credit card. A credit card right. with different angles, and you then you get these corners that are really good. Yeah, so, sometimes uh, the, the X-Acto blade's too much. You just want to, I don't know, I wish I could just use something like a pencil, but it was metal on the end, like a pencil. That yeah. way, we kind of scratch it, but not scratch it out too much. Well, well, Rob, I use a uh, palette knife. See, I just did here. Oh, that looks yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, there's your tree. Hey, I like that, uh, Henry. That looks great. Thank you. I just uh, used this yeah, use corner knife. to scratch it like that. OK, we got to use a palette knife. I got a whole bunch of them. Okay, I like your I like your guy down here. Um, I could see possibly maybe some more um, some more little shots of like pure color once in a while. So maybe maybe and that that's definitely something um, Turner would do. Of pure color? Not not pure, but I mean just take like reds and yellows and hint them all around. Just glaze them over very lightly. Uh huh. I can't do it with this because I, it's too it's too dark. But like little red, yellows, and blues to break break your up your color fields. So in here, a little I can see a little yellow back there. Are you hitting a little pink back there too? No, just yellow. A little yellow and pink. Maybe a little more red in your trees. I see you're using some red over here. Nice. You got a little blue in your trees. That's nice. And all, all I'm thinking is just a little more variety in the color. That's all. In the color. Thank yeah. you. And you can do that. You can just glaze that in. I mean, you're, it's not like you have to start another painting or anything. Just just, just glaze a little bit of red, yellow, and blue in these places very lightly. OK. Very lightly. I'm going to do that when, this, when I'm done with this painting. I mean, when I'm done with this class, I'm going to have a little lunch and then work on this thing a little bit more. OK. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And Shelly. Hey, you went vertical. Nice color. Look at. Hi, I Rob. thought she chose to take this big color field right here. And it basically is just one big wash. Even though you got this really nice tree shape out of that. Wow. Right, just, just, and by the way, look, yellow, blue, red. See how it keeps things uh, varied? It actually gives you a little spice right here. Look at that little spice mark. There's another, I've never said spice mark before. <laughs> just gives you a little bit of, see how it just gives a little accent of color right there. Um, beautiful, you even got your little, uh, Glaze over the wall down there, nice. Uh, yeah, beautiful. I don't have, well, how about this? I, I'm gonna have to pick here. Maybe a little stronger shadow here? I don't know. Yeah, that's that, that, kind of flat now, you're right. That's a little dark, and now we go with blue, but um, I'm thinking maybe a little bit of something in there. But that's what it is. That's a gorgeous painting. See now when you when you take these big areas and you just let the water just let the watercolor ooze around like that. Look how the watercolor does all the work for you. Look at that. 
Got a nice little tree going here too. That's a beauty. Thanks, Rob. It was I was really interested in doing that big giant tree mass. So it was it was enjoyable. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice, nice tree silhouette in the background here too. Look beautiful. Beautiful tree silhouette. Look at the little negative shapes of sky she's got coming through there. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to, maybe a little light in your shadows once in a while, you know, we, we talked about a couple of light branches. Not necessary, yeah. but if, if you wanted to. It's about yeah, it. that, there were a couple other excellent examples of that. So it's a good yeah. idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, did I miss anybody? Is anybody still sending stuff in or was that it? Wow, you all. That was fun. Hey, Rob, did you get mine? Oh, I don't see. Yeah, I was just thinking. Let's see. We didn't see Hector, did we? Is Hector in class? Hector is had his second uh, COVID vaccine shot a week ago and he's now having a reaction but he's feeling better i, I don't see yours uh let's see george did you send it in yeah okay did let you just me... send it uh i'd say oh it's still in my outbox oh. because my electricity is off i bet because of wi-fi or something i don't have wi-fi so oh. no it's in it's in my outbox on my phone so i'll get it to you later I'll, I'll just credit on the email. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Thanks Rob. Rob. See you next week. Thanks a lot. Have a fun day. Fun. I'll get that. Um, Thanks, you're welcome. I'll get the uh, that recording right over to you whenever it gets to me. Sometimes it takes a while, though. So just so you know. All right, everybody. Thank all right. You. Great day. Bye. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I want to do more wet into wet next week, so just so you know. Okay. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, it it's uh, just on time. Uh, in time, I'm doing a pouring ink technique. It's similar. Pouring ink technique? Wow. Yeah. I will send well, you, you the, the, the information. And you can watch some uh, documentary. Do you want me to? I will send an email to everybody, baby. To inspire you, <laughs> the yeah, the pouring ink technique. In, I want to see that. Yeah, it's, it's this study was uh, influenced by the um, abstract expressionism. You can tell if it's not or not. Yeah. What is it called, Henry? Um, the 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 uh, the artist's name is Zhang De Chen. He's the Picasso. He's considered Picasso in China. Okay, I, let me just, uh, I think the chat won't get to the record, right? I, I'll send it in the email, so you, you will get that. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Everybody have a great day. All right. Thanks, Rob. Bye. Bye-bye.